to and any other. I want to wish you a happy Easter. All my brothers and sisters, today is unlike any other day as we come together in fellowship and recognition of our Lord and Savior Jesus rising from the dead. Amen. Amen. If you fill me with that, then clap your hands and say hallelujah because I hope that you, like me, can feel Jesus in your hands, that you can feel him in your feet, that you can feel him all over you. And why can you feel him? Because he is alive. Amen. Amen. I welcome you to this Sunday School lesson here on this Easter Sunday morning, April 4th, in the year 2021. Our lesson is coming from a subject of a promise received by faith. And that subject is based on scripture coming from Romans 4 and 18 through the 25th verse and also the 24th chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 9. May the Lord add a blessing on those scriptures. Um, our golden text this morning is Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification with the supporting text being, uh, scripture being the uh, Romans 4 and the 25th verse. Thank you, Lord, for that golden text. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share your word on this resurrection morning and thank you Lord for continuing continue to love me despite myself Father God in the name of Jesus I pray Amen Saints what is today all about today is all about our Lord Jesus gloriously going down to death in spite of his enemies who did all they could to hype and increase the public disgrace and shame that was strewn upon our Savior Jesus. But it is more so more glorious in that even though he went down to death, he rose and he is alive today. And that is what this lesson is uh, going to conclude with, that glorious going down to death, but that even more glorious rising from the dead and ultimately ascending to be at the right hand of his father our God. Amen, amen, and amen. Um, there is a saying, it's a cliche, that uh, we become a product of the environment that we live in, that we were raised in. Um, we take on the personalities of those that we hang out with. <laughs> and so today, uh, our writer is giving using Abraham as an example of how we live to the promises and in expectation of the promises of God by faith. Amen. Brother Abraham, Father Abraham was a man of faith. Father Abraham uh, did not only have faith, but he had strong faith. Now what is faith? On this past Sunday, our own Reverend Hill uh, taught and walked us through righteousness through faith. And this Sunday, we're looking at by 
faith. Reverend Hill laid out justification. He laid that out for us in that Jesus, uh, having paid the, the ultimate cost, allowed us to be justified. And he laid out righteousness, that uh, righteousness is imputed upon us by God. But what is faith? Many of us may look to Hebrews 11 and 1 as a definition of faith because it says faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things uh, uh, not seen. But that is not the definition of faith. That is a condition of faith. The definition of faith is belief, yeah. trust, yeah. and loyalty to a person or a thing. And we as Christians, we find our security and hope in a person. Mm -hmm. That person being God, God the Father. And we say amen to each of our unique relationship with God in the Holy Spirit through love and obedience. Amen? amen? This is what faith is. And so here we are at Romans 4 and 18. Uh, and I, I'm going to ask if, Lady Cheryl, will you read for me? Uh, 18 through 20, 21. Romans 4, 18 through 21. Abraham against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so that by seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not only his own body now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Who staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also, also to, to perform. Hey, man, bless Amen. you for that that reading. I I like um, uh, verse eighteen. It says, "Against Abraham, against hope, believed in hope." Here is Father Abraham having been promised, having a promise made to him by God himself. <coughs> and <coughs> this promise was made to Abraham at the age of, what is it, 99? 100. 100. And, how, and, and, and it didn't... It was made before. Huh? No, I was just saying it was made before. Well, the, the, right, right. But it we're talking about the dead body yes. right now with the with the seed, which is going to we're going to go back in looking at Abraham and his faith because at the point the point where God promised him a seed and or a son, Abraham had already been bestowed. It had already been imputed upon him righteousness by God. Mm -hmm based on his faith and his continued growing faith because he was promised as we look back in Genesis uh, is I believe that's 12 <clears throat> and when we read 1 through Genesis 12 and 1 through 3 it is where Abraham was promised to become the father of many nations that's where God says to him uh, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. This is what I want you to put a pen in as we go forward because verse 3 ends with it says, and in you, all, all means everything or everybody. 
Amen. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Ooh, that's a reason to shout. Because at this time, we as believers can recall that it was really all about the Jews at this time. But as impute is a future verb, we are looking at Christ who is coming that we might also now be included in all the promises that God made. And look, we don't have to be the physical family of Abraham, mm -hmm. but we are included in his family through Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So all means that at some point things are going to be made right so that we are included in that salvation, eternal salvation, that we now celebrate on this day. Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I love that all in there. But here was Abraham standing on faith way back when. And in all the challenges that he went through, and he went through some challenges, oh, yeah. I mean, this what I just read was one challenge. Leave your father's house, get out your country, go to somewhere that I will show you. Which one of us might do that? I, I, I remember it was another lesson we were talking about, and, and you shared, was it Florida? <laughs> See, for, I, I'm glad that I can remember that because my mind is going sometimes, you, you, you know. And even even Cheryl did. Yeah. When when we when I started talking about moving someplace else from Inglewood, yeah. Cheryl was ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> but she stood on her faith and her belief yeah. in God flowing through me and it's all good. It's all happy. It's all account of good now. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Um, and so here was Abraham having gone through some challenges, some challenges, more challenges. He had some disappointments in his life. Some ups too. A up was when he went and rescued his brother. It was actually his nephew, Lot. But he brought him back alive with his possession. That's a up. But it's a down when he got the message that Lot had been captured and everything he had was taken. That's a doubt. So in Abraham against hope, look, some situations seem like they just don't have a good ending to them. Oh my God. They just, everything is going against you. And the outcome should be failure. But when we, when we, tune in to what we believe should be the outcome of things. When we allow the thought to actually transform into an action based on our carnal belief. Because see, you know, we know some things. We know some things, right? You can't tell me a whole lot. I, I'm intelligent. You know something. I'm as smart as Reverend Rose. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Good, good to see you on this Easter Bless morning. You, yeah, 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 yeah. I got some social, some uh, sociology experience. You know what I mean? I got, I got some life education coming from the street. And so when I see roadblocks in what I'm looking to accomplish or achieve, I can figure it out, because I'm smart. But Come on, man. when I can't figure it out, then I got some issues going on. But when we are trusting in God, and God tells us that this is going to be the outcome. Despite all of these 
roadblocks and obstacles that you, you know I'm facing. When I don't figure out the answer and I allow God to, to provide the answer and allow me to arrive at the conclusion of what I'm trying to work through in his time, then that is a reflection of my faith. Mm -hmm. all right, all right. And that's where Abraham was. Uh -huh. And that's what it means by against hope, against any type of reconciliation or reconciling of the challenges that I may think about, I'm going to believe and trust in God Amen. that it's going to be all good in the end. And so that's where my hope is. My hope is in God. Amen. And that's where I'm going to stand on. And that's where many of us would, could fare, could have even fared better who was really going through some psychological things through this pandemic. Really going through some, some physical ailments. Some, some mournful moments in, in this pandemic that caused us to end up in a place to where we were psychologically messed up because we took our, our, our eye, we took positions that were not of God. Now, I can interject right here and say that even when we we detour, mm -hmm. <laughs> even when we detour, it does not say that we don't believe in God. Uh huh. So we should not be uh, totally dejected because we did something and, and it was not of God's will, we should not be totally dejected. What the writer says in our lesson, he attributes that to what is weak faith. But weak faith does not cancel out your salvation. Right. Okay. Okay. No. No, it doesn't. And that's a blessing. That's another blessing that stems from Jesus. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 today is today is good, y'all. Yeah. Today is good. And it's good to be looking at the subject of faith mm -hmm. through the prism of our father Abraham. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good because you you know I don't I want to believe that every one of us have had a weak moment. <laughs> At least one. At least one. <laughs> every one of us have had a weak moment, and so by being able to examine the faith of Abraham mm -hmm. against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken, we can identify the platform in which we currently stand. The ground that we currently stand. The foundation that we currently stand in. And that's what this is all about. This, that's what Sunday school is all about. That's what Bible study is all about. In being able to look and through the prism or through the eyes of someone else and not only seeing good but seeing some bad in order to establish a more a more solid foundation for ourselves. I've heard some folks say, oh, I don't need to go to church. You, you know, I watch I watch uh Reverend Price on television or you know, I just watched Joel Osteen on television. Well, let me tell you, Saints, right now we have been forced into a position of many of us in uh, being on social media and fellowship.
fellowshipping via social media. However, it is very difficult to replace mm. the environment and the atmosphere of in-person fellowship. Because we learn and we are strengthened by like-minded mm -hmm. and like-hearted believers. I, I can look at the ways of uh, Pastor Cresso and Reverend Roseman yeah. and Sister Roxanne yeah. and Sister Jeanette and look the, the, the work that Brother Jimmy and, 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 and Brother Anthony do every Sunday and that can and that encourages me to want to continue on where I you know in my own way I'm like, I don't want to do no physical labor. I don't want to set up chairs. I don't want to put the sound system up. You know, I don't want to take the extra time to stay. I'm not feeling that right now. But by being in physical contact and being in, uh, uh, in visual contact of the actions of these folks just mentioned, it strengthens me. It livens me in seeing that. And I can see the Spirit of God yeah. working through them and working through them affecting others. And I'm a serious believer. I want to believe that. That when I say I trust in the Lord in all my heart and lean not on to my own understanding, uh -huh. And in all my ways, I won't, I believe that. This is where I like my brother Paul. You know, I, I, I have said it before that I don't want to uh, be one. I don't envy Paul. I don't want to walk in Paul's shoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> before I knew anything, I used to, yeah, I want to be like Paul. But no. The rock hurts. The rocks hurt. Yes, they do. Them rocks hurt. I do not envy Paul. However, however, I can account righteousness to him after his uh, Damascus Road experience. He's a great example. I want. He was when he was in the life persecuting. He was down for the cause. And after his Damascus Road experience and he was transformed, he was down for the cause. So I can, I can look to Paul as an example. I can even look to uh, uh, some other religions and see some aspects that are great examples. If only I evangelize like Jehovah Witness. Get out there. Mm -hmm. Spread the word. Spread the good news. How much better right. would I be? How many souls might I save? And this is what today is all about. The good news. Yeah. The gospel. And us believing by faith that Jesus rose. Amen, amen. That's what today is all about. Amen. amen. Then 19 saying, and being not weak in faith, hmm. he considered not his own body now dead. You, you know, Cheryl's, uh, who was that? Who, who would he be? Her granddaddy. Cheryl's granddaddy had a whole, a number of kids after seven. <laughs> you know, I think after the first one, he had three more just to show it wasn't an accident. And he happened to be a preacher. So, but what we do know, and this is where if I had that, 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 that intellect of a Reverend Roseman on the sociology, I would break this down for you a little better. 
But what we do know is that as we begin to approach our 60s and above, mm -hmm. that our bodies are just not in the shape or place any longer to be having children. And this is where Abraham was when the promise was made to him that, you know, he and uh, Sarai, who would become Sarah, was going to have a seed or a son. They were well up in age. But because of Abraham having triumphed over a lot of the challenges he had experienced and his faith having grown, it's not, uh, uh, it's not that he, how do I want to say this? <clears throat> the promise is not the promise itself, but it's God Come on down. making the promise yes, that Abraham believed. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how he would, they were going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. He didn't know if God was going to you know, make the innards young again that they might produce. He did not know, but he trusted by faith in, in what God said, in God's word. Mm -hmm. And why did he trust? Well, he trusted because of their relationship. Come on now. Is there anybody in your life Come on now. that you trust, that you know without a doubt that when they tell you something, they're going to do it. Yes, sir. There is no wavering. I'm going to be there at uh, 10 o'clock mm -hmm. to make sure the sound is plugged in for service to be ready to start at 1030. And I'm going to be there every Sunday. If I'm not going to be there, then I'm going to call so-and-so and so-and-so. Can you trust that that person, have they demonstrated in the relationship that they are worthy of holding up to the promise that they made. Mm. I've been through some situations, a lot of them, where that's not the case. But I do have a couple that that is the case. That when they make a promise to me, I, I don't doubt it. They have, they have demonstrated repeatedly See, I don't believe in a relationship being on a first-time-I-meet-you basis. I don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about me. Not on this side of eternity. I don't believe in that. But with God, once you meet him, and once you speak the words that I confess with my mouth, thy Lord Jesus, and believe in my heart that he rose. You are saved. And once those words are spoken and that relationship is established, you can, you can take it to the bank. The promises that God has made. And he's made a lot of promises to humans. Oh, thousands and thousands of them. I, I, I got a couple of them here. Uh, in Hebrews, he, he, he says, I will never leave thee. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. He's there 24-7, and he's big enough to be there for each and every one of us. In Genesis 15 and 1, he says, I am thy shield. Mm -hmm. That means when I'm going through some stuff and somebody looking to hurt me, he's my protection. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 41 and 10, I will strengthen thee when you weak. And there's nobody that you can call in the midnight hour to talk to. Because we get weak. It's hard surviving. Boy, it's hard every day. It's a lot of phone calls you don't want to receive. <laughs> then he says, I will help you. That's in Isaiah 41 and 10. And then when he put forth his own sheep, he goes before them. John 10 and 4. That means that the troubled waters, <laughs> God already knows about it. Because he didn't went before you got into him. Yeah, that's just like stumbling blocks. Amen. Mm -hmm. God moved those stumbling blocks. And 
he, he move them right out of your way. Says he will uh, make your enemies a footstool. Uh, and then when you tie it and just tie it and just tie it because of the grind day in and day out. You, you, you know, the energy and the strength that it takes to stay with the grind. The energy and the strength that it takes to turn the other cheek. You become tired. The energy and the strength that it takes when the kids are unruly and just doing it. And you're on your knees. I understand now they talk about grandmothers, grandfathers, ran out the, the knees, being down praying for the children and the grandchildren so much. You just get tired. God says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He has made promises and promises. <coughs> and because of today, we can stand on those promises. Amen. 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 And, and then it goes on to say, he's standing out of the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. We want to always give the glory to God, but we can give that glory to God even at a higher level by sharing it with somebody. Share your testimony. Sometimes who you're sharing your testimony with is just what they needed to hear because they're going through something similar or have been through something similar and that is the word, that is the light of Jesus coming through you that will cause them to want to know more about him. That will cause them to want to receive him as their Lord and personal Savior that they might be saved and be in your place. Amen? And then being uh, fully persuaded that what he had promised, yes ma'am, he was uh, able also to perform. But well, that's just trusting. That's trust in the relationship. Anything that you say, <laughs> I, be I believe it. I believe it, Lord, and I'm going to stand on it because I know that you are able to do all things. Yeah. You created on day one. You created on day two and six. And then you took rest. You created all that is. You created me. You knew me even before I was in the womb. And you continue to know me. Uh -huh. So you know, if you did all of that, Lord, if you parted the Red Sea, uh -huh. oh my Lord, mm -hmm. if you gave Noah the vision to build an ark so that we would continue on, my God, you can certainly, certainly cause me to have a baby and a seed to continue this lineage for what is to come, what was needed to come, can do all things. And then verses 22 through 25, uh, Deb? Read those for me. Before you go on, brother, yes, I like please. that the part of, I like that it's the, the being fully persuaded. So fully persuaded. I mean, that's just like, there is like absolutely no doubt. It's just like not one doubt. I like that. That 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 yeah, is a, a, amazing, and you know, <laughs> that is really persuasive. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, twenty twenty two through twenty five, and we'll come back to that. Twenty two, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was, who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. 
Amen. Amen. Bless you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Without any doubt. No doubt. Without any doubt. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that we trust in what God has said. Without any doubt. That's a hard, that's a that's a challenge. Not hard. It's a challenge for each of us as, as Christians. And that's why we encourage all of you, my brothers and sisters, to stay connected. There are many platforms to receive God's word. Stay connected. And as we are starting to come out of this pandemic right now, the enemy is getting busy. And we need to be even more connected so that we can continue to fight off the wiles of the enemy. That's you. You can see all of our our younger folk, all of uh, the businesses uh, being directed to reopen in some states by governors and whatnot, and that is causing uh, 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 infection rates to go up, young people to get sick. This is the enemy's ploy, and so we need to just stay connected. We need to stay in prayer, pray for those, pray for those decision makers who are allowing all of this opening up to happen without the proper protocols in place. Pray for our, our believers, our brothers and sisters, that they stay in prayer and that they believe without a doubt in what God has promised us. And that is the way for us it, it, to, to, to stay healthy. That is the way for us to stay safe. Amen. Amen. And therefore it was imputed. Come on, Reverend Rosen. I want to comment on uh, verse 20 um, where uh, he said he staggered he staggered not um, he, he staggered not at the promises of the promise of God through unbelief. Amen. And it, it's suggesting the weight, the weight of the circumstances in opposition to what God has said. The heaviness of the load he carried being so heavy causes him his knees to buckle. Uh-huh causes him to stagger because it's so heavy. Right. It causes him to almost to succumb to the weight, to the pressure of the circumstances that he's facing. And, and, and in all of our situation, that becomes the real issue. It becomes the real issue when we're dealing with issues, whether it's buying a home, buying a car, relationships, um, it is the weight of the circumstances that causes us to stumble, to fall back, or to give up. I don't care what it is. Whatever we're facing, whatever we're dealing with, sometimes it gets so heavy, we want to quit. Yeah. And what he's saying is that physically, from a physical, natural perspective, the possibility of him achieving what God has promised was so overwhelming he should have staggered. He is well beyond uh, physically. She's well beyond physically. Not only that, she has been barren. She has not given birth. There was nothing that would suggest that it was going to come to pass, which was an overwhelming circumstances, but he did not succumb to the pressure of it because he didn't look at it. Amen. He only saw God, and it was God that caused him to get through it because he didn't consider it. He only considered the promise of God. And when you're going through whatever challenges you face, whatever opposition is there, stop considering it and consider the promise. I'm all right now. That's all right. Amen. Amen. Don't let the Bible become your focus. Right. Amen. Um, 
22 through 25, God accepted Moses as being a man of faith. Not of only faith, but great faith. And so he bestowed upon, I, did I say Moses? Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> he bestowed, imputed upon Abraham a title of righteousness. That Abraham's actions, as Reverend Roseman just laid out, did not stagger. And they please God. And this, when it goes in and then it says it wasn't written for his sake alone, we can tie this back to that, that, that promise of Moses becoming the father of many nations. All right. And all, that word all, that comes back to here because what is being shared about Father Abraham right now wasn't for just him. It included us. All right. And the reference why I can look at Paul, formerly Saul, as an example is because Paul mm -hmm. is, is and was the, the, the standard bearer of the gospel to us. And his entire life from that moment that he met Jesus was dedicated to bring the gospel to Sister Cheryl, Reverend Hill, Brother Maurice, Elder Syria. That was his entire life. And so this, this level of faith that caused God to impact righteousness unto Abraham it should stand for us as well let's grow in our faith that God had, will bestow this level of righteousness unto us so that we as Reverend Rosen laid out when challenged don't focus so much on what the challenge is mm -hmm. as we do what God promised us he would do in some of these promises that I shared with you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him. Jesus is the way. Mm -hmm. We said it earlier that we yeah. have to establish the relationship with Jesus through our mouth and in our heart by believing he rose for us to then step into uh, our inheritance and for us to receive all the promises that God has given. We have to believe that unto that. And who was delivered for our offenses? Mm. Yeah. Reverend Hill said last week when I look into the mirror it doesn't change what I see, but it allows me to see. I, I got some offenses, every one of us, as he laid out last week. Because of Adam, we were born into sin and iniquity, so we have some offenses. And through our lives today, saints, we have offenses. But oh, thank God. From the shedding of the blood of Jesus, yeah. Yeah. our offenses are covered. Mm -hmm. That God can look upon us. Mm -hmm. yeah. That 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 moment on the cross, mm -hmm. Father, why have Thou forsaken me? Come on now. Mm -hmm. God had to look away mm -hmm. as Jesus bore all the sin, all of our sin at that moment, because He can't look upon sin. But then, once on Sunday when he rose. <laughs> we all good today, brothers and sisters. All right. And taking us into the 24th chapter uh, of Luke. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, very early in the morning, some of you came out 
to Sunday school. Some of you are joining us uh, via social media for Sunday school. Very early mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. Mm -hmm. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right, right. And it came to pass as they were much, much perplexed mm -hmm. thereabout, behold, Two men stood mm -hmm. by them in shiny garments. Mm -hmm. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, yeah. they said unto them, Why right. seek ye <laughs> the living among the dead? Yeah. All right. He is not here, yeah. but is risen. Yeah. Remember how he spoke unto you yeah. when he was yet in Galilee, yeah. saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of yeah. sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. All right. All right. Hey, man, on the first day of the week, that's Sunday. That's it. The Sabbath is Saturday. All right. And know that Christians uh, uh, move their first day of the week to Sunday so that it would not conflict with the Sabbath. Amen? Amen. But they say very early in the morning. I've heard the cliche, uh, the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> this case, early in the morning, illustrated the third day. Yeah. For Jesus was fulfilling mm -hmm. prophecy. Mm -hmm. I also want to say that early in the morning well. represents zeal. Mm -hmm. Zeal. Yeah. A great desire. Yeah. A great desire. And these who were headed to the tomb, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. had zeal. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But know this zeal is a double-edged sword. Because being a Christian and having something to stand on worthy can cause some people not to like you. Amen. Some people to criticize you. <laughs> but as Christians, right. we want to continue going forth yes. with zeal yes. in always looking on, towards man. our Christ, in always searching ourselves mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. better in always improving ourselves in understanding what thus says the Lord All in right. always studying to show ourselves as worthy on, always right. because when we when we run up against a challenge and when we're being opposed by someone who just don't know we want to make our father proud I know it. I know Devin loves to make his grandma proud. I know your children want to make you proud. Right. We want to make God proud that we are doing those oh, really? things that He yeah. wills yeah, yeah, yeah. us to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. very early in the morning, we want to continue, continue getting out with that level of zeal. And then as they found the stone rolled away. And they entered in and found out the body. Where it says, and they came to pass as they were much perplexed. Perplexed. Oh, Do yeah. you find yourself yeah. perplexed? Yes, sir. In some things in your life? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just not understanding why this or why that. We have conversations all the time like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm perplexed. Mm -hmm. But when we carry that level of zeal, all right. We can eliminate that perplexion. Oh, oh, See, Jesus had been telling them all along, all along. Yeah. about this process, about this day, what was going to happen. But they, they, I, you know, I, I don't want to say that they didn't believe. I want to, I want to believe that this was by divine intervention, possibly veiled. All right. That they did not really truly embellish and understand what Jesus was telling them all along. Mm -hmm. Because all these things had to come about to fulfill the prophecy. Right. 
But we want to continue with zeal, as I said, and searching out, that our perplexion may be alleviated. Amen. All right. Amen. See, that was, they, they were uh, looking forward to prophecy being fulfilled here. We, it has been fulfilled. Yes, we Amen. And we have all the history at our hands. We have the knowledge here. We know. We know. We know what has happened. So let's use what we know. Elder? Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Keaton. Praise the Lord to everyone here. But, uh, just to touch on, as you were saying, even in the Old Testament, All right. the Bible tells us that the secret thing belongs to God, but those things that are revealed to us belong to us. The same way in the New Testament when Jesus told Peter, flesh and blood didn't reveal to you who I am. Huh? But it was God that revealed these things. And so, so we, as you said, that sometimes it, on one part it can be looked at as, because I don't believe that Jesus said, yo, doubt, because you have a uh, little faith. All so right. all these things have to be looked at. It's not just one thing here, because yeah. God is a mystery. Amen. 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 You know, in, 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 in verse 8, uh, well, I, I, I'm going to come back to verse 7, but in verse 8 it says, and they remembered his words that they are the the women who went to the tomb. Mm -hmm. And that relates to we have the words. We have the words of Jesus, what I just said. They remembered his words then. Let's remember his words now. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. And then, and I'm going to get back to you, Jimmy Liam, verse 7, where it's on the third day, rise again, this, and, and, and sharing that he had to be delivered into the men, uh, hands of the sinful men, and crucified. This was ordained from the foundation of the world. It had to happen. They didn't they didn't kill Jesus. Amen. He laid his life down. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He laid his life down. He gave his life. Amen. Because he knew how much God loved his creation. Amen. Yeah. All right. Yes, yes. And he loves you and me Amen. Yes, to this day the same way. Amen. So let's look to Father Abraham, Brother Abraham, example of faith. And continue to work on our level of faith. For we know that it is by faith. It is by faith that we accept the words that we have. And the account of what took place on Good Friday. All right. And then on very, very early in the morning on Sunday. Amen. Hey man, we know it's those out there that we're going to go out there and tell just as they went back in verse 9 and told the disciples Amen. that ain't going to be listening to us and not going to believe it. So let's improve our understanding and knowledge Amen. of the account Amen. so that we can share it properly with whoever it is that we are discussing with. Hey Amen. 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 Uh, Reverend Rosie. Yes, sir. I got time and, and close for. Well, bless you. Thank you. So here in this lesson, here is here is God leaving nothing undone. Nothing undone. In Genesis, Satan comes to the woman. That's right. Uh -huh. And he tempts man through the woman. Uh-huh. God gave man the law, and Satan came and tempted man through the woman and she became the instrument in which Adam's sin was revealed. And in the same sense, women now become the instrument that God uses to initiate his resurrection. 
wherein he gave the gospel to the men. All right. But he but the women were the first to witness the resurrection and share it to the men. So we emphasize how Eve caused the fall, but also was the women who also witnessed the resurrection. And they became the first instrument. So where, wherein Satan used the woman uh, to enter into the world, God uses right. the woman now to enter the gospel to the world. Yeah. All right. This He left nothing undone. Amen. He completely overturned the works of the devil. Yeah. And though these 12 men went on to carry on, it was first the women who, show, who was the, uh, the most courageous because right. they got it first and they shared it first. Amen. Amen. I wanted to point that out. Amen. Amen. That's a good point. Because <laughs> oftentimes in jest, when we are playing around right. with each other, right. we get into little moments where, hey, well, you know, it, yeah. it, the women was the one who caused the, the fall. Right, it wasn't that right, way. right. Well, now we know <laughs> even more. Right. And that's what this word that's was saying. Right. Now we know even more. Mm -hmm. We right. know that now it is the woman. Right. <laughs> who right. was instrumental. Who was okay. right. In he, sharing the gospel. Right. Sharing. Right. right. Said, Ooh. And brought, it was the women who actually, <laughs> I, I who was the first to read, who was the first witnesses right. undoing what Eve uh, done undoing. in the Garden of right. Eden as being the instrument right, wherein right. Satan We're came in. Right. She's right. now right. the instrument that <laughs> gets Satan booted out. That's it. Amen. Give us our credit. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Give honor to whom honor is due. Blame for that apple. Amen. That's right. You ain't got to worry about that apple no more. Now let him fool you. No, because I didn't mean so it started with the woman first. What started with the woman first? Uh, when she told, uh, she, uh, God told her, told, told her, don't, no, she, she don't get the, uh, don't get that. Uh, well, you know, we're going to come back and talk about that a little bit more because now it's time for us to, to prepare, uh, to close and prepare for the service. Easter morning resurrection day service. The woman was the fall. It went through her, but today, now, the woman is the one who right. gave the gospel as the witness, first witnesses of the resurrection. Amen. So they overturned all that bad stuff from the it beginning. Made it, it, made it, it made it good. It made it good. They good by us now. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, uh, yeah, and so, we, yeah, and I want to see the teachers for a few minutes after we get finished. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, by your, for your graciousness, your kindness. We thank you for our teacher, uh, uh, Reverend Johnson, Father, for his commitment to you, to your word, and his passion to share the word, Lord. We pray, Father, that the word that has gone forth will reach our hearts, that it will sink down into our soul and spirit, that it shape and influence our character and conduct, Lord, and that we become better men and women because of the word we've heard today, Lord. We pray your blessing on today's service, on each home that is represented here. Father, let your anointing fall on this place. Bless the choir and the preached word that is to come forth. And all of God's children said, Amen. 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 Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you all. Bless you this morning. How's everybody this morning?